Now there's a pretty woman that knows how to dance. Here's your look at the Spirit Halloween, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre Leatherface Side Stepper. Always watching slashers? Show off your incredible taste in horror movies when you get the officially licensed Texas Chainsaw Massacre Leatherface Sidestepper. Watch him come to life as he sways his signature chainsaw in the air. If you consider yourself a horror buff, then this decoration is a must-have. As Leatherface leans very obviously to the side, I'm going to grab myself my tape measure and see how tall the Sidestepper Leatherface stands. Now, you could have gone the route of either ordering this guy online from Spirit's site, which I think at the time was $32.99, or if you were lucky enough to have a spirit store in your area, you could have gone to the store and paid the $45.99 Canadian. I ended up doing the latter. Uh, Leatherface, though, in this case, actually stands about 11 inches in height, or it's going to be about 27 and a half centimeters tall. Leatherface will have to take a little bit of a side step over in order to free up a little bit of space to look at the earlier looked at Trick or Treat Sam side stepper. After this review, I'd actually had done, after I'd finished the review of the Sam, my daughter had confiscated Sam, and for a while, I couldn't even find where he was, till eventually I asked her, she asked, I asked her a couple of times, and she was like, I, I don't know where he is, I don't know where he is, until eventually, I found that she put him inside of a big chest. That's where Sam's been this whole time. Sam, luckily now, will be able to come out for Halloween, along now with the sidestepper Leatherface, and the figures are about the same, as of course, they also have the same functionality built inside their bodies. To get Leatherface to actually move, two things are required on your part. First, you have to obviously take the figure out of his packaging. Then you'll have to remove that plastic restraining piece to prevent the battery power from working. Hopefully, though, you're lucky enough to get one that hasn't already had that plastic piece removed and kids haven't been frequently touching the button on the front. Then you may have to change the batteries that are inside. By the way, the batteries are three AAA batteries, so they're fairly inexpensive. The batteries are also located on the back or on the bottom of the figure's feet, along with an on and off switch. Now, you'll have to install batteries here, and you'll have to install them here. Strange, really, that they have to go in two separate places. But again, you have your off and your on. And then right at the back, uh, right around here, was the restraining plastic piece that, as you saw at the beginning of this video, I already popped that out. But now that it's already switched to on, all that's really required on your part is to press the button here on the front. Now, you may be asking yourself, why would you have even left the paper still there? It says press on and off, just so I know and just so I can show you that the button where you're going to be pressing is right here. Before, of course, we do that, let's get a closer look at Leatherface as the pretty woman. For a smaller version of him, and actually, it looks pretty good. I've always been kind of more... More interested, I feel, in the pretty woman design of Leatherface than the original Killing Mask. Something to be said about blush and, and rouge, and not to mention, of course, eyeshadow that he has all around the skin mask. I think works better, I feel, for a creepier-looking Leatherface. And he's dressed to the gill as well. Dressed to the nines, they say, I think. The, the figure does have a, a tie, first of all. The tie, I actually thought for a second had a wire frame in there, but actually realizing it now, it's just the way they put a stitch line right there. It sort of gives it almost this illusion that there's an actual wire built in tie, inside the tie. It's not the case at all. I'm not even sure really how he ties the tie in the first place. It actually looks like he just stapled it to his shirt. And the overall figure has some pretty good padding right here. Obviously, there's mechanics. There's going to be a wire built into the arms, for example. And you can really feel he's pretty spindly down below when it comes to his legs. He's got his jacket on. Fairly well uh, tailored, I would also feel as well, for the jacket itself. And again, all in all, like the leather face looks pretty good. Now, honestly, Sam was also a really good looking sidestepper too. Now, he would have relied more on the fabric material of the burlap sack. Leatherface, on the other hand, is actually using just a plastic face. He has, though, padding, though, as already mentioned, on the, if you were to, like, kind of look inside here, he's got, like, a little bit of, like, cotton batting, but most of it is actually kind of hard, especially, like, right around here. He does have, of course, the larger feet. Luckily, he does have also the plastic on the bottom of his feet, not only serve the purpose of actually storing and, ho and housing the batteries, but also with the plastic feet, it gives him a lot much more stability when the figure's moving around. Now, his arms themselves, uh, the hands are tanned really weirdly on the one side and not nearly enough on the other. I don't know really the reasoning why they put so much spray tan on one side of the figure's hands and then left it so barren on the other. But he's only got just a little bit here on his fingers and a whole lot more of it on this side. He also has one bare patch, and I'm not sure by looking at the other leather faces if they're all consistently like aired like this where there's a little bit of paint missing on his hand. 
but the chainsaw itself looks like it's been busy. There's blood splattered all across the teeth and the front and the back of the chainsaw. And of course, like in the movie, it's sort of more of that greenish yellow color. There is an ill arrow sticker here. Now, I think it's supposed to be there. It doesn't really seem to serve much purpose. I suppose you could probably peel this off, but it looks like it's quite securely attached onto the chainsaw itself. All little chipped away pieces of paint are on the top of the chainsaw. And Leatherface is actually holding it quite well, as hopefully he should, because the moment you press the figure, he'll actually start cycling through the sound effects of the chainsaw. And you'll also hear kind of grunting as well. Now, the thing about the side steppers, though, is while pressing the button, it's going to move back and forth. I'm kind of kind of illustrating this before we actually press the button. It's going to move back and forth. It's going to make the sound effects. If you are one that just gets annoyed, but you have to wait it out before this thing finally shuts itself off, you can at any given point press the button again to turn it off. So if you're like for my, myself, for example, my daughter was always pressing the button on the feet of Sam. I could always then go back to it and turn it off. And I'll maybe bring back in Sam so you guys can see how it actually sidesteps. But what I am going to do, though, is I'm going to press the button here on the top of his feet. It is very obviously quite loud. And just to turn this on the side so you guys can see as well. He does sort of, as I could best describe, a little jig as he's moving his chainsaw back and forth. And it actually does as well go a long time before eventually it does shut off. Now, as I already mentioned, if you did, say, press the button accidentally or somebody in your house keeps going up and pressing the blasted button, if I do it right now again, you can go back and press it again to turn it off which is I like one function that should really be included with anything that has audio. I can't stand things that have music or audio clips added to it. And you literally just have to wait it and run its course before eventually it just shuts itself off. Sliding though back Leatherface, we're going to bring back in Sam that we looked at before. Again, I've already done the review of Sam, so we're not going to really cover off territory there. But pressing the button right there. Different this time because you can hear Sam's giggling away. Plays sort of a... It doesn't even really sound like Trick or Treat either. It sounds almost even like something from Nightmare Before Christmas. But again, at any given point, you can go back and turn it off. I like these. The thing about them, though, is that they're $45.99 a piece here in Canada. So they are a little on the more expensive side. I think they're decently detailed. I mean, really from like the lower half, he looks more like a stuffed animal than he does anything else. The plastic head sculpt, I think, is well painted. And I think it captured a decent likeness for Leatherface, even though he is a little bit short on stature. He is holding, of course, the chainsaw that he does wield back and forth. Like the way that they sway sort of work exactly the same. I would imagine underneath, if I was to strip away the, the foam batting and the costume that you you probably would see a frame underneath that looked identical with one another if you are lucky enough to find these in stores uh, you know again if you're a texas chainsaw master fan they're kind of fun on their own if they were just on their own for 45.99 doing absolutely nothing like if they were just doing what they're doing right now i don't think they would necessarily be worth the 40 46 dollars for them but the fact that actually leatherface does move back and forth does sound off of course his chainsaw that's yeah, kind of a fun little piece not something of course once you've done it two, three times, or in my case, eight times. I think after that, you pretty much have had your fill with it. But again, the good thing about them, with whether it be Leatherface or even Sam from before, is at any given point, at any given time, you can go back in and turn them off in mid-sound. And that's always a good thing. I was finally able to get that arrow sticker scratched off the chainsaw. I think it was more there just to tell you which foot you're supposed to press on Leatherface to turn him on. Even though, again, there's a big circular piece of cardboard that literally says, press on and off on his foot. All right, maybe to be fair, if that piece of cardboard was to come off, you'd only have really two choices to choose from. At least the sticker on the chainsaw tells you right away without having to have a 50-50 chance. The Leatherface, though, as small as he is on stature, at least does deliver some pretty good audio. In fact, actually, we just recently, well, I guess not so recently, we looked at the Leatherface Spirit Halloween statue, and that also had some pretty equally clear sound. The sound, of course, of him revving his chainsaw, not to mention all the grunts and mumbling that he does in the background, is quite clear on this sidestepper. Some could maybe very well say that $45.99, $46, that's a bit... That's a bit steep for a sidestepper. And you know what? I probably would agree with you as well. Chalk it more up to the idea of impulse buying. You go into Spirit Halloween with the idea in mind that you're only just going to browse. You're only just going to browse. But you always end up walking out with a bag. And then, heaven help you, you end up having a 20% off coupon. Well, right away, that sealed the deal. And I got the sidestepper leather face for myself. Now, I 
very, very, may, may very well have also picked up a couple of other sidesteppers. We may be looking at those in upcoming reviews. But what do you guys think of the sidesteppers? Do you think, first of all, that forty-five ninety-nine is a bit steep for the fact that you get yourself a leather face that sways back and forth, mumbles and revs his chainsaw? Or you think, on average, that's a good price? Let me know what you think of them down below in the comments. Actually, by the way, have you been collecting any of the Spirit Halloween sidesteppers? We looked at the Sam from last year for Halloween. And then this year, of course, we will be looking at Sam and... Uh, a few few others also as well. If you guys enjoyed this video and want to hit with a like, if you guys are loving the content you guys are seeing, you certainly would like to stick around for more spooky related reviews. If you haven't already done so, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below and you're turning on as well the bell notification. I did already tip my hat that we will be looking at, well, most definitely we will be looking at some more spirit related Halloween items. So if that's the kind of thing you'd like to come back to this channel for during the month of Spotober, make sure you're coming back with ghoulish peepers peeled. There's definitely going to be a lot more reviews coming your way. As always, guys, thanks for watching. See you guys next time.